It seems that every brand is releasing a vintage-inspired watch these days. And while I like many of these releases, not many of the brands releasing these retro-looking timepieces actually have the heritage to draw upon. Today I'm taking a look at a watch that clearly has the vintage pedigree, the new Tag Heuer Carrera Glass Box. Hi, I'm Craig, founder of Wrist Enthusiast. Recently, I had the chance to get my hands on the new Tag Heuer Carrera Glass Box Chronograph in both the blue and black reverse panda dial configurations. I have to say, these two recent releases might be my favorite Tag Heuer releases of recent years. But before I get in depth, I just wanted to remind you that if you've been enjoying my reviews and videos and want to make sure you don't miss any, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for your support. Now let's get started. Tag Heuer, well really Heuer, is a brand that has a lot of heritage to draw upon when releasing vintage inspired pieces. I am happy to see that recently Tag Heuer has been going back to their archives when designing and releasing new models. The brand released a new Carrera glass box that is just full of vintage callbacks. I for one am very happy about the release and was able to check out both the more modern Sunray blue dial as well as the more classic reverse panda model. The first thing you will notice is the so-called glass box construction of these new stainless steel Carrera models, hence the nickname. And what does that mean exactly? The watches utilize a dome crystal that extends over the whole case and dial, leaving the watch without a bezel. This was the case construction used in some of the earliest Carrera models released in the 1960s and gives the watch a very vintage feel. Being a chronograph, you still get the tachometer, but instead of on the bezel as you typically would see on a chronograph, the scale is actually inside the crystal on the dial albeit raised from the rest of the dial. It works well, as this is where the tachymeter scale would be anyway if there was a bezel. Because of this raised tachymeter scale, there are a lot of depths to the dial that add to the visual interest on both models I reviewed. The dome crystal would have been plastic or hesalite on the original models, but here Tag Heuer uses a sapphire crystal with anti-reflective treatment. I'm all for continuing to use old materials on certain important watches, like hesalite on the Speedmaster, but sometimes having the modern upgrades just makes for a better, higher quality watch. And with the crystal that extends over the edge of the watch, it just makes sense opting for scratch proof sapphire. While the dial and crystal has a smooth, curved feel, the lugs in the rest of the case is actually rather angular. This gives the watch a sportier feel, perfect for the racing chronograph, but the watch really is. The watch still sits nicely on the wrist and doesn't wear overly large. At 14 millimeters thick, the watch is not slim by any means, so don't expect this to wear like a Rolex Daytona. However, 3mm of the thickness is purely the dome crystal, and a thicker case is to be expected from a watch using a domed or box crystal. At 39mm in width and 46mm lug to lug, the glass box is an easy wear for just about anyone. Under 40mm seems to be the standard sizing for vintage inspired timepieces, and Tag Heuer just stayed under it with this release. On my 6.7 inch wrist, the watch just fits perfectly. The main difference is that the blue dial version is a little bit more modern in its aesthetic, comes on a blue leather strap, and has the date at 6 o'clock inside the 6 o'clock second subdial. The black reverse panda version of the watch feels more vintage, and it includes silver subdials, and the date is at 12 o'clock above the word Carrera and the Tag Heuer logo. But I actually didn't realize it had a date until I looked very closely. That's how hidden the date becomes behind the chronograph seconds hand. So people can argue whether this placement was the right decision or not. Looking at the display case back, you'll see that even with the date at 12 o'clock, the movement has exactly the same specifications. Tag Heuer just put the date window at 12 o'clock instead. The black version also opts for perforated black leather racing strap that is comfortable and fits the look of the watch. Both variations come on a comfortable deploying clasp. Speaking of the movement, the watch runs on the new automatic TH2000 automatic chronograph movement that features bi-directional winding. The watch actually has an impressive 80 hours of power reserve and it's well finished. It operates at 4 Hz and is really an upgraded variation of the Hoyer O2 movement. You can see the watch is well finished with the rotor designed to look like the Tag Hoyer logo. It's a nice touch. As to which version I personally like better, it's hard to say. I probably prefer the more vintage style reverse panda model, and I suspect many collectors would agree with me. However, most of my family and friends who saw both models and are not enthusiasts actually preferred the Sunray Blue model. But I mean, who doesn't love a Sunray Blue dial? 
Overall, I'm happy to see Tag Heuer get back to its roots with its most recent releases, including the new glass box chronographs and with the new Tag Heuer skipper. You can pick up both the Sunray Blue and Reverse Panda models of the Tag Heuer Carrera glass box for $6,450. That's it. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Tag Heuer Carrera glass box. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. And head over to wristenthusiast.com to check out any of our written reviews, watch guides, and celebrity watch spotting. I'm Craig Carger, and thanks for watching.